welcome to the basement. We are, of course, talking anime. We're up to episode 15 of Blue Seed. We're kicking off the third disc on the, the DVD set that I have titled Prelude to Sacrifice. This particular episode, Lost in Troubling on a Trip to Michinoku. It originally aired January 11th, 1995. It had its English premiere... Reportedly, December 25th, 1999, so on Christmas Day, this particular episode first aired in America, from all reports. So, this episode kind of strikes me as a little bit interesting, in that the ending sees the TAC realizing what Marakumo and Katie are up to, basically... It's a PSA, uh, and what I mean by that is this. Think about how, particularly in the 90s, that there were a lot of uh, children's television programs. Here in the United States, we had Captain uh, Captain Planet, where it's like, just talk about the evils of industrialization and how man has no regard to for the earth. And and the planet is dying, it's hurt, it's getting vengeful, etc., etc., etc. And this particular episode of Blue Seed kind of sees that put up front with a construction crew being attacked by Cap by the Kappa uh, a Sea Aragami. And the realization at the end of this episode see, uh, sees the, the, the Kappa uh, Aragami struggling towards a tree. Uh, and it, and it can easily be interpreted as is actually said that it was trying to defend a certain tree that has a shrine in front of it. Now this is not the first time we've seen this in Blue Seed. Uh, I, I believe the episode where Sakura uh, debuted had a similar premise where a tree wanted to be where its um, longtime companion, another tree once was and so the Ara the plants that are basically the aragami are using as monsters throughout this series basically have a, a, a menta individual personalities individual mentalities and that a lot of them just want to say hey just let me stay here i'm a freaking tree no reason to knock me down there's plenty of other space around where you can build your your building put have me in the in, in the front yard just leave me alone let me do my thing so yeah and the whole thing was what murakumo and katie's doing with uh lord shusana o is to start a an armageddon a plant armageddon by channeling all the hatred the earth uh has towards man to wipe out humanity uh, so it all these things really fall into place, and this simple realization it definitely holds true. Now, is this the obvious way the series plays out the rest of the way? Well, I don't know. I don't quite remember. That's why I'm watching the episodes one at a time and talking about them. But it certainly it certainly throws it out there in a in a not so obvious PSA way. In this episode, we also learn a lot about Katie, that uh, she is basically the polar opposite of Momiji in every single way possible. We, uh, one of her friends confuses Momiji for Katie, because with Momiji's hair up, she definitely looks like her twin sister. They're identical twins outside of their hairstyles. And we hear how just how smart, beautiful, graceful, just how picture perfect Katie is. And we know it's a running gag with Momiji. She can be a, a clutch, she can be exasperating. She isn't as smart as her sister. She doesn't think she's as beautiful as her. And basically, Momiji is someone whose confidence in herself can be can be uh, shaken quite easily. And 
And we actually have Matsu Dara trying to tell her to, you know, stop trying to compete with Katie in the way she can't. Compete with her in the way she can, because there are some things about you that Katie certainly lacks. Uh, uh, an interesting personality is certainly one of them from from how we've seen Katie presented so far in the series, at least from my viewpoint. Speaking of Matsu Darda, a while back in the episode, and I, I forget the names of the individual episodes, but uh, there was the episode that basically revealed that she is obsessed with her work and that she will put it ahead of everything and everybody else. And we saw the obvious negative side effect of that as how it affected her family. This episode sees the positive sides of it because uh, she sent Kome and Yagashi off to get a microbe that could be used as a weapon against the Aragami. So, again, so Matsudara, if she has a task, she will focus on that task single-mindedly with disregard to everything and everybody else in order to win the battle against the Aragami with science as the key. So, again, kind of cool in that regard there. Now, this episode also had a lot of comedy in it that I quite enjoyed. I love the bit with Kome and, and Yagashi. You can tell that Kome is sweet on him in this episode. It may have been the Saki talking, but and probably because she is more of a man than he is. Because uh, uh, considering how much uh, drink she shoved down his throat at one point. Still, it was amazing that Yagashi wasn't hung, depicted as being hung over to all hell the very next day. Uh, but it was very over the top. You could just see her, like, Kome getting drunk enough to say, Come here, big boy, and drag him off for a little drunken fun that she certainly won't regret the next day. While he will go be in a corner of bawling and crying. Assumingly, of course. Uh, the construction foreman's eagerness to get the job done, uh, to get this building built on time, under budget, and everything else, and having everything possibly wrong happening, from the cap attacks to Sakura uh, Yamakazi, who, after she deals with a number of the kappa, ends up putting her hand on this heavily damaged framework and knocking it down. It's it's over the top of funny slapstick in a way. And of course, uh, Sakura has her some over the top facials, uh, particularly with those uh, spiral glasses of her. Really, it looks really silly at the same time. So, and I appreciate things like that, little details. Um, but she, we have her, the usual comedy that's kind of being the pushing her as being a very effective comedy relief role. Yes, Sakura Yamakazi. Uh, is very effective as a with her magic and everything associated with her. Uh, it's her ego uh, that gets in the way. And the fact the final one of the final scenes in this episode is her complaining that her spotlight, her opportunity to show just how powerful she truly is, uh, that spotlight and opportunity was taken away from her because of Momiji just shows uh, uh, how Sakura is just a character you just want to laugh at whenever she's on screen. You know she's going to kick ass, but at the same time, you know she's going to say something so over the top and so... She puts herself ahead of everyone else in regards to her own fame and fortune. Because that's what she is. She, I believe her back, uh, she spent most of her time in America... Take for that for what you will. It's, actually, this is probably Blue's. This episode, kind of, now that I think about it, it, that's Blue Seed's answer to me making fun of a lot of the because Japan uh, jokes that I make of regarding a lot of the fan service shots. Sakura being an over the top egotistical obsessed with fame and fortune because she's spent so much time in America is obviously the joke there. Now that uh, not, I just. I just got the joke, and, and it certainly works. So so on that note, with me actually getting uh, the joke, 
we'll wrap things up here. Uh, the plan is for me to go over episode 16 on Saturday. I'm trying to keep the videos down to two, at the most three in a in a day, night, what have you. And I'm you know, trying to even things out in preparation for the returns of Supergirl, Arrow, Gotham, Flash, etc., etc., and trying to sort out how I'm going to cover that mess in the coming weeks. I still haven't quite figured it out yet. Anyway, coming up tomorrow in the basement, we got a, it's a Thursday, so we got a comic book review. We'll be wrapping up our look at the Tank Girl Karaoke Trilogy with issue number three, and I'll... And I do have some things to say about it, because uh, that's the first full Tank Girl story I've ever completed reading. And we'll, of course, be going over issue, uh, excuse me, episode four of the A D O A, the O A, excuse me. <laughs> and so th that's the lineup for tomorrow. Uh, I might pop on Twitch. I'll always take a look there, twitch.tv slash fredkazin, if you want to kick me a few bucks via Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash fredkazin there, um, uh, let's see, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, you can stay up to date, not miss any postings by visiting my website, fredkazinsbasement.com, and on that note, my friends, and you are my friends, we'll catch you next time.